what I want to do is I want to take a look at uh, the amount of goods that we're transporting over here into Zara, Ragusa, and Durazo. And the other thing is that I need to figure out where we want to uh, start building goods. So Caroni seems like a good location. We're fairly popular inside the city with a uh, 63% and I think you need 40 to buy the building license. So here's a location that we might be able to start off our, uh, our merchant uh, building thing. Um, so from Caroni over here, we can produce wheat and pottery, which I believe are universally uh, accepted and universally traded, um, re universally needed. A convoy rather. is idle. So that is uh, that is one thing that we can trade in right now, and another would be uh, would be wood because wood is actually also uh, fairly prominent in especially inside Venice and locations where a lot of shipbuilding has uh, actually been done. So um, I'll try to find two locations that provide useful things. So over here, they make adobe bricks and wood. Who else makes adobe bricks? Yeah, a lot of people seem to make bricks here and there. Zara actually trades in wood and pottery, as well as metal too. So let's actually stop inside Zara and let's get Zara to to start producing some things for us. So we have 49% popularity in it, um, so we should be able to build some buildings. We do need a representative, uh, representative uh, person inside the city, so we'll move our fleet here. And yeah, here we go. Uh, we can buy a, a license to build a warehouse in Zara. Uh, we'll require a popularity of 40, which we do have, and the licensing fee will cost a whopping 35 grand, but you know what, that's fine. We'll buy that. Um, you had to start off with a warehouse, so we'll buy this building first, and that building will essentially just uh, be built in some time. And um, yeah, I think this building, uh, well, they used to what they used to make it right was that uh, you'd you'd have an overview map, and then um, you can click on various different cities, and you can uh, kind of jump to them, and then on the main panel here of the screen, you'd actually have a 3D little city. Um, kind of in like a sim city esque uh type of map and i thought that was actually really really neat and can you help us out what this something? mission is here uh let's see we can get them some dyes and they'll reward us with it but i don't know where to get dyes so i think i'll uh, pass on that opportunity <laughs> yeah so now we have a warehouse in zara welcome back there we go strangely enough Things could hardly be better. And Zara actually produces a lot of wood. So what I'm going to do here is that first I'm going to buy one storehouse building, which we'll need. And from there, we can then build some uh, some productivity buildings here. So we have a few different choices now. We can build a butcher. We can build a sawmill. We can build a pottery and a foundry. And we can build houses too. And um, inside the previous games, you'd actually build them on a SimCity map here. Um, so, we have a few options here uh, to really expand our empire. Now, these three goods here, the sawmill, the pottery, and the foundry, they will always require zero uh, other objects to produce them. But if we go over here uh, to the butcher, you'll see that we need salt to sustain it. And for the uh, for the honey thing over here, uh, apparently honey doesn't actually need anything, so that is good. Um, and, we'll, and also we can build uh, we can build houses because um, a portion of the population inside Zara will always be uh, working and the people outside of that will kind of wander around trouble. until they can find some jobs, right? So with that said, uh, one of the things... Ooh, missionary. Let's see what that's all about. So with that The ways said, of the Lord um, led you to me. Huh. Apparently we get five uh, piousness or something, so that's good. If we take them to Rome, so I guess we will. And yeah, Rome really... Uh, you know what, I think I talked about this, but yeah, Rome really, really became uh, kind of a ghetto. <laughs> as bad as that kind of sounds during the time period over here where... Um, yeah, the, the city really declined. At the very most, it had about 60,000 people inside it during this uh, particular time period. Um, so let's see what, uh, what Rome actually produces. Rome produces wine, metal, and bricks. Alright. 
Well, what we uh, what we want to do now is that now that we have a warehouse inside uh, Zara, we actually don't need anything uh, there in particular to uh, to to do trading or building there. We don't need a representative a representative anymore because uh, we already have some guy there. Um, so instead of that, I, th I have a feeling that sawmills and potteries will be uh, very, very needed goods. But what I want to do right now is that I want to check if uh, how how badly do we need uh, metal bars around. So metal bars are actually in quite a lot, in quite a demand inside Rome. So that is uh, that's one thing. Rome or not Rome, but Venice. What about in other places? And what I'm checking here is the 10-day daily consumption of goods uh, by the city and the businesses, um, because that tells us a lot about places. So over here, let's see. Yeah, Ragusa and Venice take a lot of iron bars, and I believe um, pots are also a universal good. So let's just double check that. And yeah, pots are also going to be used quite a bit. So what I can do now is that I can go to Zara, Welcome back. and Strangely what I'm going enough, to do is uh, things could hardly be better. I'm going to build a few sawmills, and I think I'll build four sawmills right now, and that'll take out a ton of bricks take out of a look uh, circ at circulation. So. Our fleet here is going to have to buy some bricks and ship them to Zara in order for us to continue building buildings. And the AI factions over here will also do the same thing. They'll also try to build uh, their own plantations and factories and stuff like that. And as they do it, it'll cost bricks and wood, so that's kind of why wood is always in demand. Oh yes, and you do need wood, obviously, to build ships, so that's also another good reason. Over here, I'm just going to take a nice stack of 80 bricks, deliver it to the town, and then you just sim simply sell the bricks inside the market to uh, have that transaction go over. So yeah, our ships There's a message here. from Venice. Good thing and you're here. We'll come here. We have a shortage. And we will sell the bricks just like that. So with all the bricks sold, that should speed up production of, uh, or rather, building over there. And from here, what we have to do is that we have to switch over Zara onto a stop in which we pick up goods um, to sell. And from the warehouses, I... Would oh. you like to take a rest? Yeah, I forgot about because this. Because there is nothing... So, um, from Freak. these warehouses, we have to designate it going well. uh, so that the, the ships actually pick up the maximum amount of stuff that they, they, the warehouses have. And that should solve one of our problems. A convoy is idle. Now, in the meantime, what should be happening is Good that thing if you're here. to the warehouse, we have a shortage Zara, of workers. You'll see here that um, well, there is a shortage of workers right now, so there is um, there is that issue. Um, but you see here that if I click on the little panel here, we pay into uh, building wood um, resources, and that costs 350 gold coins per day, and that I will be converted into six logs per day and that will just kind of gradually go as uh, as time goes on now a shortage of workers is a big problem because that reduces the amount of uh that reduces the efficiency right so what we can then do is uh, we can build a few houses to sustain the population to make the place grow far faster so i'm going to buy one house here seeing as how housing in zara is uh is scarce a so not a lot of zara. people are probably going to move here um good thing you're here we have a shortage work of workers yeah so that will just kind of uh, continue being uh, created and now our convoy now uh, has some wood which then it can um, sell in different places now as that goes along I have a feeling that we'll need to uh, change our little trading routes too yeah those pirates are going to be quite a bit of an issue but over time the pirates is uh, strengths will decrease to a to an amount in which uh, we can then take them on at um, so what I think I'll do here is that I'll get the Hermes fleet and I'll change up their courses. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to delete all of Hermes's is trade uh, routes and I'm going to get them to just kind of do something like that. That way what I can do here is that I can get the Hermes fleet to sell and also load goods at the same time. 
So there we go. Now we can get the Hermes fleet to deliver uh, also wood and whatever comes from Ragusa um, to Athens and area like that. <clears throat> So yeah, that is uh, that is kind of that. We're really just building up our trade empire here. And well, now, uh, speaking about pirates, I see that the uh, the fleet that's been bothering us has been growing uh, weaker. I, I do remember checking on them earlier and they had 30 people, or rather um, three ships. And um, yeah, now that they have two, so one of the other rival factions inside the game, rather uh, one of the other uh, Venetian families, have uh, fought them so what we can do now is that I'm going to load up the Adama fleet optimize its combat strength so then it's uh, it has 48 guns and whatever sailors that it can bring and we'll send these guys uh, over to chase down the pirates so yeah oh, I see a pirate uh, fleet over here so we're going to try to find this group and we're going to try to uh, take them on well, uh, well, I guess we'll see some more combat today. Yeah, their fleet is getting uh, severely weakened. I see only 36 combat power, so I'm going to guess that they're down to one ship now. Get these guys to make a raid. Um, let's see. Let's attack his pirate base. <laughs> so yeah, this will start up quite a vicious uh, fight against him. Now, the strength of our escorts here appear to be uh, 61 compared to their 59, so I guess we'll fight another naval battle here. Alright, so this battle should automatically All hands at battle stations. Yep, just like that, and again, have We're to be wary of uh, what is underneath us. Yeah, I'm still not sure how far your cannons can actually shoot, but apparently it's, it's a very... It's, yeah, it's very far away. What is our stoop doing over there? We're running aground. They lost something. We're running aground. Oh, I see. There's actually a little indicator for uh, for when you shoot. There are certain times where uh, shooting was better, when you have better chances of uh, hitting the enemies. Okay. They lost something. So our sleep over here appears to be in trouble, so we'll help them out. This ship over here appears to be fairly uh, damaged already, so we can probably ignore that for now. They dropped something. Try to uh, get rid of these two ships over here. Yeah, I'm gonna go in here. Hope to go and grab them. Point blank shots. Point blank shot. Come on, reload. Nope. Yeah, they're going to try to sink one of our sloops. Our sloop over here has actually um, has had its sails whittled they down to nothing, something. so they, this ship uh, over here has minimal speed right now. Target hit. And yeah, typically what you want to do inside these uh, naval battles is, is that you just want to come in at the s in at the front or uh, yeah, at the very front of the enemy's boat and try they to uh, get off something. a few shots like that. Luckily, I'm playing on the normal difficulty, so I mean, these naval battles oh, aren't too hard. Abandoned ship. Cool, but we are gonna lose one ship like that. How is our sloop doing over there? Our sloop is actually, yeah, our sloop isn't doing very well um, over here, so we'll grab uh, control of it. Got him. And we'll see if we're going to be able to uh, pick off this ship right here. Bank in slightly, fire, 14% health, 14% health. It looks like these pirates are using a lot of, uh, a lot of grapple shots, or uh, not grapple shots, but chain shots that take out our sails, seeing as hell. Oh, this guy's gonna get away simply because our ship has 13 units of sail left. It's barely unit, uh, no. That really sucks. That ship's gonna go get away simply because of, uh... How little we have in sail string. So I'm still not sure what this actually does. The reef, the sails button. That's that's a bit of a mystery to me. Um, so yeah, that that pirate fleet uh, ship looks like that's bailing out. Try to finish him off. We're uh, running aground. 
Bank over here, get one shot off over here. Over here, get one shot off. That finishes off one pirate boat. And this enemy's ship seems to have run uh, out of ammunition or something because it's not firing uh, back anymore. That's something we can salvage. Yeah, that's see they are trying to raid my other sloop down. We'll try to uh, whittle down this uh, enemy's boats. We're running aground. Try to uh, get it so that we turn and fire over here. I wanted to get right the like between the two of those boats. But that kind of sucks, we weren't able to do that. So yeah, our sloop is trapped inside the water, but if they're going to uh, constantly circle our little sloop, we might have a chance at, uh, rather our sloop might have a few chances in getting off a few good shots. We're running aground! Yeah, his second boat over there is uh, almost up in flames. It's gonna be just a little more. Oh, got both of those ships at the same time on that volley. So we'll continue to fire. Continue to try to. Uh... Oh, this is a good look. This is a good opportunity. I want to get right into the middle of both of those ships to uh, to fire off these volleys. Drop something. Come on, we can take off this ship in uh, the next volley. Oh, got a volley on that boat. Can we get a volley on this side? There we go. So that's going to be another uh, ship We're down stranded. over here. The sloop should, uh, what the sloop should do is that it can still move just ever so slightly. So I'm going to try to get the sloop to move into uh, into some firing position. Shows. Yeah, we're not going to win against this guy on a one-to-one -one battle simply because his cannons uh, appear to do more damage than us. Shows. So what I want to do is that I want to use the sloop as a bait ship for uh, for us. So both of our ships here have roughly equal amounts of health. Come on. He's firing his Wait, shots Brandy. into nothing, so that's how he's Hold on. Lost Come on. We're running a crowd. They dropped something. I think our ship's slightly more maneuverable than theirs, though, so. Shows. We'll see. see how the AI deals with this. Oh my god. It's a snail battle now. I think, uh, no, their sails are fine, our sails are fine, but our two ships are, uh, are wind reliant, sh our ships that use wind, right? So, um, yeah. We're running a crowd. Starting to go in the opposite direction of the wind, I, I suppose, so both of our ships are slow now. Ooh, uh, no. overboard. Yeah, They've resumed shooting. They lost something! See, can our sloop help out at all? Yeah, the sloop can fire off a few volleys. I mean, every little bit of damage counts right here. We've lost someone. Here's your bomb. Oh, uh, come on. Enemy ship's gonna run itself into that, um, it's gonna run aground and that's gonna slow it down. That was a nice volley right there. So his ship actually appears to be quite fast. They lost something! This is just a battle of attrition now between the two boats. Or between the three boats, really. That's we can salvage. Oh, come on. <clears throat> so 
see if I can uh, get a few 